Welcome to our lecture online. Here are three important rules that we should remember when we're dealing with a series. When we use the sigma symbol and we see something like this, like this or like this, we need to know how to handle that and we're going to need some of these rules in the near future here. So let's say that we have a constant multiplied times a sub i and and i changes from 1 to n, n of course can be any number, n represents the number of terms you're going to end up with. But it turns out, since each term is going to be multiplied by c, we could simply take the c out. Essentially, we're factoring the c out, and we can write this as the constant times the sum of all these terms. If we have something that looks like this, the sum from i equals 1 to n of just a constant, that is equal to the number of terms n times the constant. Even though there's no i in there, this will be the result of that. Now you may wonder, well, how does that work? Because there's no i in there. Well, here I have it written up here. And notice that when i is equal to 1, since it doesn't change anything, it's simply just going to be c plus. When i is equal to 2, we get c again. Plus, when i is equal to 3, we get c again. There's only going to be three terms because the limit is three terms. So this is equal to 3 times c. And notice that if this was an n, it would be n times c. And that's where this rule came from. And finally, if we have the sum of a sub i plus b sub i for i going from 1 to n, we can simply separate them and write them as two separate sums. Again, those rules can come, and come in very handy when we're trying to simplify and come up with the various expressions using the sigma symbol when we're dealing with a series. And so that's why we should memorize those, because they do come in handy.